We good? Okay, hi guys. So today I have a very, very special recipe to share with you. My core memory as a kid, does anybody have any of those like memories that you just remember too vividly for no reason? So mine is when I was in first grade, we went to the apple orchard. We came back to the classroom and the moms that volunteered for the field trip and the teacher, they made us homemade applesauce in the crock pot. And it was so good. I remember the smell. I remember it being warm and a little chunky because I didn't mush it up all the way. And it's just one of those things that I remember the whole day super vividly because of the applesauce. So I will share a little fact from you from scientificamerica.com, I'll paraphrase it. Essentially what it says is that when we smell things, it triggers a greater brain activity than we actually see them. So me smelling the applesauce makes me remember more than when I actually see a jar of applesauce. I thought that was kind of cool and probably why I remember something from 20 years ago. So I've concluded that this is why when it's fall and it's a nice crisp evening, the smell of cumin and chili and cinnamon and all of that stuff just makes you want to wrap up in a blanket. So I'm going to be making something in my Instant Pot. I'm going to be making homemade applesauce. I got this recipe from delish.com because it had five stars. And I didn't want to talk all this talk about applesauce and make a gross applesauce. I'm also going to be making it in my Instant Pot, which I've got the fact on here. I'll tell you the website in a little bit, but on average, your Instant Pot is 10 times faster than your crock pot. So for reference, if we were to make this in my crock pot, it would take four hours on high. But in my Instant Pot, once it preheats, which is the downside that nobody tells you about, with instant pots. Once it preheats and builds pressure, it's only going to take five minutes. So I'm going to start by chopping up my apples. I just cut around the core and then I cut them into like big cubes, nothing fancy. Just enough to where all the water and ingredients can get in. So I just kind of chop them up. And the cool thing about this recipe is you can make a ton of it. And if you're crazy about applesauce or you end up having kids that are crazy about applesauce or you go to the apple orchard and you pick way too many apples and you're like, oh no, what am I ever going to do with all of these apples? You can make a big load of applesauce and then can it. And maybe in my next speech, I'll do how to water bath can. I don't know if I could really do that here. Definitely want to make sure all the seeds are out. So we're just going to cut one more apple. So I just slice it next to the core. Slice it next to the core again. Slice it next to the core again. Slice it next to the core again. Throw out the core and just roughly chop. All right. So I doubled this recipe because I didn't want to look like a silly goose and not have enough. So if you don't want a ton of applesauce, just half all of this. So I've got two teaspoons of cinnamon, the best part. Just dump that in there. Measure with love. I've got uh, one half a teaspoon of salt. Don't measure that with love. You don't want salty applesauce. And then the sugar, you can definitely measure with love. I got four tablespoons of brown <laughs> sugar. Throw that in there. Oh, I forgot. I've got the rest of my apples that I cut at home frantically before I came here. So we'll dump those in. Try not to spill them through here. Okay, beautiful. I feel like I'm on a cooking show. And then I tested this recipe at home. It calls for one and a half cups of water. I went down to one because when I 
release the pressure from my Instant Pot, it spewed applesauce everywhere. So we're going to do one cup, I think it's a teaspoon, cup of water. Then the trickiest part, which shouldn't be tricky at all, is putting on the lid. Oh, I got it the first time this time. Look at that. We'll lock it. You always want to make sure it's locked. There's a little vent back here. You want to make sure it's turned on seal. That way it can build the pressure. And then we're going to pressure cook it. Look, I still got all the plastic on it. It's brand new. And we want to make sure it's on high pressure. I've already got it set for five minutes. So we'll just wait. And it'll turn on itself. Boom. Done. So it's going to build up pressure, build up pressure, build up pressure. Once the pressure is built up, this little valve back here will stick up. Then once the timer is to zero, <clears throat> the recipe calls to do a natural pressure release, which means doing nothing and just letting the pressure come out itself. And that little valve will pop back down. That's when you know you can open it. If you, however you decide to let out the pressure, once it's done, you'll take the lid off, you mash it up, however finely that you want. I like chunky applesauce. You'll mash it up, and then you have to let it cool down because it's very, very hot. But my mouth. And then, once you're done with all that, you'll end up with warm homemade applesauce. Just like this. And it smells delightful. Would anybody like a scoop? Yeah, I do. Yes. Maybe I'm hungry. I'm going to try it. Well, thank you. I hope you make it. I've never tried homemade apple sauce, so I kind of want to try it.